Rahim, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. We are so fortunate, so blessed this evening, uh, this Valentine's uh, evening, um, to be gathered uh, with uh, friends uh, who are in the virtual space, uh, sharing the space with us, uh, and students and others who are here with us uh, on campus, on the campus of Princeton University. We are um, excited to welcome uh, one of our leaders, one of our beloved uh, community members, Arshi Ahmed, uh, who has recently taken um, a trip, um, uh, a journey, uh, so to speak, uh, to love and I think of love and um, wanting to share her reflections and her time with us uh, through pictures, uh, through stories. Uh, if any of you all are familiar at all with Arshi's uh, Instagram and social media posts, and you get some inkling of, of what we are, are in for this evening in terms of beauty and storytelling uh, and, and really giving us um, um, uh, a kind of window into her journey uh, to Mecca and Medina. Uh, we know that that journey is blessed and those who make that journey come back in many, many ways transformed uh, and renewed and also bring the light of that blessed city, Medina, uh, with them back uh, to, to their communities and to their massages and to their homes and to their friends and loved ones. And so we're so blessed to have that light uh, with us and that love that we call Arshi Ahmed uh, with us to share uh, and reflect on her Umrah journey to Medina and Mecca. Uh, we appreciate your patience. Uh, we may go a little longer this evening than, than perhaps we had originally planned just because we wanted to allow our students to come in and begin to, to uh, gather and get their food. Um, but please make yourself at home. Again, we are very, very excited to have you, to have Arshi. Um, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Thank you so much for joining us, Arshi. Okay, thank you so much. Um, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Um, Thank you so much, Imam Khalil, everyone that's here. I'm, if I don't make eye contact, it's because my eyes are all over the place. Um, I'm a real person who loves to make eye contact. So, so forgive me if that doesn't happen. But, um, you know, I am just so um, honored and privileged uh, to be here. Um, let me put this on standard, not standard. Is that cool? Okay. Um, I'm just, I, I feel just so privileged and blessed to, to be invited um, here to, to, to be with you all, um, with the students, with the community. Um, this Umrah journey was just such a gift um, for me. Um, I think I wanna kind of step back and say that I think the last two years, um, you know, beginning in 2020, um, for me has been um, a journey of understanding Allah's decree and that everything happens by Allah's decree. And, um, you know, my, my, my um, husband, Suhaib, Allah Yarhamu, you know, may Allah have mercy on his soul, um, you know, was diagnosed uh, with cancer in, in 2020. And he had a gift of uh, a year to live. And um, it was a real gift for, for, for myself, for the community, for his family and friends. Um, but it was, it was a real, you know, opening for me. You know, I knew obviously that Allah is the best of planners and, and, and all of these things, but you really get to live it and believe it when you see someone um, uh, who is, uh, you know, diminishing in, in front of you. But it's really, it's not diminishing, it's being like raised in rank in so many ways. And so, you know, SubhanAllah, you know, so he passed away in um, April of 2021. And I've gone through different seasons, you know, since he's passed, you know, there was, it was the tail end of winter at that point. And then, you know, the spring came and, um, and then, um, and then summer, you know, we had a really nice summer in many ways. And the fall came and the fall was very difficult. Um, I think, you know, grief kind of manifests in so many different um, ways at different times. It's been such a uh, learning for me how to, you know, maybe anticipate it, how to deal with it, what it means to be in sadness, to hold that. Um, and, and for me, grief 
just means that there's just so much love and missing of that person. And it's like actually a good thing. Um, and having said that, it's hard too. Um, and so October for me was really hard in many ways. There's a lot of firsts, a lot of firsts without Suhaib. And, um, but subhanAllah, I was thinking back to, you know, my invitation to, to Umrah. Like there was a phone call that came in early October. I was going through my phone seeing when, when did my friend call. And so my friend Amani, who runs this um, Umrah organization called Noodle Huda, um, contacted me in the, in the beginning of October saying, hey, Urshi, we, we you know, want to invite you to Umrah. We go every year. And we also want to remember Sahib. We wanted to have a tribute on his behalf. And so obviously I was just, this is amazing. Um, it was really out of the blue. And I was like, okay. And Ridhia couldn't come. Obviously there was uh, restrictions with age and vaccination and things like that. So I was like, let me just think about it. Um, and so I took a day to kind of figure out where in whose care would she be and Bashallah, um, you know, her aunt, Sohib's older sister who lives in Virginia, um, took care of her, um, her cousins, her, her grandparents. Um, and so my heart felt good and it called up Manny back and I was like, let's, 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 uh, let's do this. And so, you know, like you, and I was thinking, reflecting back that, you know, you never know when the seeds of, of healing are put, you know, like, that was like a seed that was planted, although I was going through so much grief in October, that was the seed that was planted for a little bit later, you know, um, and really this, this Umrah trip was a journey of, of healing for me in, in so many ways. Um, and, um, and so the, the trip was supposed to start in on December 24th, um, and it was a 10 day trip. And December 24th is a special day for, for myself and Suhaib because it's our anniversary date. And, you know, like, I, I just, it's amazing to me that, like, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like, really just, you know, was looking out for me, was, was, when knew that that would be my first, it would have been our 16th anniversary. Um, and, you know, of all the places, he's like, let's, you know, I'm going to send you to Medina, a place that Suhaib longed for, loved, talked about, you know, his love of the Prophet, so was love. And so truly, it was like a, you know, an anniversary gift, um, for me wrapped. Um, and subhanAllah, you know, as I started packing for my journey, you know, like there's things where we had like a list of things to bring. Um, but two things that I wanted to mention was that I brought along um, a journal, um, a blank journal that I started just, you know, writing everything and anything that would come to mind, writing down du'as that people wanted me to recite for them, writing down names of people that crossed my path throughout my life in so many ways. I just kept writing their names and started taking some notes of, um, about like what Umrah is about and like the different du'as I can read and things like that. So like, you know, this journal was really near and dear to me and, and I hold it close still and I refer back to it. And, um, and then the other thing that I kept with me was Suhaib's Dasbi. Um, you know, Subhanallah, like he loved to do the Quran and salawat. And um, he's had many different tasbih zohar, misbahs, you know, you have so many different names for these things, uh, the Quran beads. Um, but this is one of the, the more recent ones that he had and, and really loved and I've, I've kept near to me. And so in so many ways I was bringing Suhaib along and, um, but you know, his presence for me was there throughout the trip. And I think, you know, I didn't miss him and that's, that's like a good thing, you know, because he was literally like there um, throughout it. And, and I also reflected back on, you know, our Umrah together. I got an Umrah and back in 2013 with him. And so I remember moments of like, oh, he would be over here. And he said he would be in those places and, and enjoying um, certain things. So like all those flashbacks of like, oh, he walked this path. And so, so that's enough about Zahib, but mashallah, like he, he was around and all the lessons that he, you know, he taught me. And, um, otherwise. And so, um, mashallah, like, uh, one thing I wanted to reflect on, I know, like, we have, I'm going to move on to the, um, actually, we can move to the first slide, because this slide, uh, let me see, if I just press, oh, there we go, um, is uh, Rua and Shiba. These are Princeton alums, and I put this up there because Rua was kind enough to drive us to the airport, JFK, and just reminds me, this is uh, Princeton, you know, Muslim Life, Princeton, Muslim Students Association story, because these are students that I knew here, they, you know, came through the program, and so these people are just a reflection of you all, um, of all you students that, you know, have blessed uh, me by being in, 
in, in our lives. Um, and so, um, you know, please always stay connected and um, mashallah. And Shiba, mashallah, went on the trip with me, the person in the middle, and she was my roommate. Um, okay, so next slide. There we go. Okay, that's just me in the airport. I had to put that in there because we were enjoying. <laughs> I think it was not Hanefe, it was something else. Oh, I forget. It was like a Turkish uh, style of JFK. But yeah, that's our <laughs> middle. Okay, what's next? Let's see. Okay, there was, uh, as we were headed to the, the gate, there was like this really nice uh, mosaic. So I was like, okay, we're already in the, in the space of uh, Islamic civilization. Okay, so what's next? Um, okay, so this is on the airplane. This is a screen um, right in front of us. You know, everyone watches their movies and other things. And, and I was like, okay, this is not the time for any of that. So let me see. And subhanAllah, like there was a section that had like, um, you know, um, different du'as. It was like a book. There were like certain uh, books in there. And this was a book about Umrah. So there were towards the back, there was all these supplications and du'as. And they were like the best supplications I have read. Um, you know, in, in, in my Dua reading space. And so Alhamdulillah, there was like three, four pages of that. So I took pictures of it. I started writing down some things and because it, I think it's nice to write down things as well. Um, and so, um, so yeah, so keep looking out for the airplane <laughs> like gems. Um, so the next one I think is just more of the supplication. There was another page as well. Um, and then after that, okay, so we are in Medina. <laughs> so much of the flight was smooth and alhamdulillah, we've arrived. Love this logo. I mean, it's just so beautiful. It says Medina Manawara. Manawara means the, 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 the lit city. So the city of lights, the city of Noor, you know, like the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is, you know, our, our prophet who just, you know, illuminate, is illuminated, you know, puts out light wherever um, he walked and all the things that he said or touched. Um, and continues to, to be that for people. Um, okay, so then of course you have to take a picture with the sign. <laughs> um, and then next, okay. So mashallah, we're here, we're like, um, you know, in the bus uh, driving to our hotel um, that was just really close to Masjid Nabawi, which is the, the Masjid of the Prophet. Um, so let's see, is the next one a video? Let me see, can you hear this? No, it's not a video. This is just a beautiful um, landscape. Keep going, uh, keep going. There we go, this might be a video. Okay. Okay, so, so Hajjus Shah Mehmoob is our teacher on this trip, and he uh, also taught Arabic here uh, for many years. Uh, right now, he's like, and um, I really encourage all of you guys to look at me. It was just so beautiful. You're just seeing this. Yeah, it's high. It's high. And this is where Sayyid is with me throughout the trip. So you'll see this does be uh, make its appearance. Um, and then the cats of Medina. So you also see a lot of pictures where there's mashallah, all these different cats who are um, in Medina, in Mecca, like on the mountains. And so this is a first glimpse, mashallah, of being inside Masjid Nabawi. Um, you know, our hotel it was just literally a block away. So it was just such an easy access um, inside. Um, there's certain limitations because of COVID. You have to have a phone with an app that, that you have to show as you walk in. But khair, you know, like you, you, uh, you know, deal with, you know, the changes, you know, as anything. Um, and these are just different views of this masjid, Masjid Nabawi, as it's known um, in the city of lights. Um, this masjid in its current day has gone through obviously renovations since the time of the Prophet Sallallahu And you'll see um, a couple of, uh, an image, an, a model of what the Prophet's home looked like. Obviously it was this modest space, um, a small space. And obviously in the, in the time of the Umar, the al -an, like there were changes that were made, expansions, and the most recent expansion, obviously, during the Ottoman period, and then obviously um, in current day Saudi Arabia, like during King uh, Fahad's um, reign, like they really expanded a, lo a lot of things um, in this masjid and also um, in, the, in, the, in Mecca, the, the Haram, like near the Kaaba. So just, and this, this gate over here that you see, um, basically um, is the border, as you would say, of 
the precincts of the masjid. So it's, it's really, it, it helps you kind of guides you into the different gates and there's different gates that are labeled and that really helps in terms of meeting up with people. Before phones, you had to kind of have a meetup point and subhanAllah, there's so many people, obviously like you can really get lost. I remember subhanAllah in 2013, Sib and I had a smartphone, but we didn't, we didn't plug into the data. So we always kind of like, we're going to meet at this gate. We're going to meet at this pillar. We're going to meet, there's only one hiccup, but otherwise we always have at each other. So the gates are important. So you can see, and just mashallah, just the illumination of the city. And you could just feel the light. You can feel the love um, in all of these spaces. Um, and I'll tell you more about these little shade things that you start seeing like these, these are the coverings and you know it gives you shade um, during the day from the sun. It's beautiful. It's something, it's, it's a more recent thing in the last, um, you know, probably, you know, I think 20, 30 years um, it was designed um, and also is retracts. So there is a video that shows you that, how it kind of um, retracts as well and closes um, very beautifully, very quietly. And so this, um, I believe is, um, you know, we landed um, late Friday. So this is, we went to sleep. So this is Saturday. It's like Fajr time. And, you know, mashallah, like, you know, the Adhan. I mean, you hear the Adhan, you know, obviously throughout the five prayers, but also at the Hajjud. And I think that's my favorite Adhan, the, the Hajjud Adhan. You know, and you're, you're just sleeping and you're just like, oh my God, like, we got to go. Like, it really, you understand what the Adhan is. It's like, just keep going. Um, and so that was really one of my um, most favorite um, things about uh, being in Mecca and Medina was at the Hajjud Adhan. Um, and so we're entering into the Masjid Nabawi. There's many gates. This was the one that was closest to our um, section. And so as you enter inside, it's just like this beautiful, majestic, you know, um, geometric patterns that just show you, you know, in infinity. You just feel like you're in the presence of like, you know, in, in a beautiful way. It's like not overwhelming. It almost just, you know, seems like it's just endless, you know, and I think I mean, that's something about love in some, so many ways, you know, it's just so fluid. It's just, it just surrounds you. It comes in so many shapes and sizes and forms and you have to know people's love languages and how do they express love. And so for me, like the geometry was, was something about that. There was just so many different shapes and colors and things and it all kind of worked in harmony if you were there to kind of perceive it. Um, you know, the thing that you see right on the top um, is actually a retractable roof. Um, it didn't happen in this trip for me. And I know like certain um, areas, I think some people did see it, but in the, in the last Umrah that I went, um, like after Fajr, they retract it. So you actually see like up into the sky. It, it's, it's really amazing, you know, the architecture. And really it's like you're staring into the heavens. So the Adhan. <laughs> roof me of course selfie <laughs> this is my journal you know um so basically i know it's a little bit small but um you know i just wrote bismillah rahman rahim in the name of allah the most merciful the most compassionate um and when my servants ask you oh, oh muhammad concerning me i am indeed close to them i listen to the prayer of every supplicant when he calls on me so let them respond to me and believe in me that they may be rightly guided. Um, it's a verse from Surah Baqarah. And, you know, just for me, it was just, you know, like, you know, I'm here, I'm listening. So just write and, and recite. And this is the other beautiful thing. Like I really, for, for me, you know, like SubhanAllah, like, you know, obviously we all know the Quran, you know, is there as a gift for us, um, but sometimes it's neglected. And for me, like, you know, my connection to the Quran, you know, wasn't there. And I feel like on this trip, like I feel really connected to it in so many ways. I felt like I wanted to read it. I wanted to recite it. And 
This is something that, you know, Sahib loved. Sahib loved the Quran. He wrote about the Quran. He recited the Quran. He would hum the Quran. Um, so it was always around me, but I, you know, like it's always that connection that you're trying to feel. And, you know, I've been on this journey and I feel like, you know, this was one of those moments where I just felt like really just so connected, just why I stood there. I stood by the pillar and um, after Fajr and it just started, I opened up a surah and I think it, it was like, ended up being surah Rahman and just started reading. Um, out loud um and, and there's just qurans everywhere so it's also like this reminder like it was really like literally staring at you like from every corner in the most beautiful way and i think that's one lesson that i brought back where i bought a quran from um one of the bazaars in medina and i try to leave it around like close like on the floor like near the couch like on the dining table and i really think that instead of putting it up on a high shelf like which i used to do like i you know want to have it around you know um because you know sometimes you just you want your good things to be around you um you don't want to cover it up and leave it so that's some a reflection of mine and i really you know really give us a love and and of the Quran and for us to you know have that time to read it um, all of us um so yeah i love the script too i remember you know the something about it that was just so clear it's the Quran and the infinity kind of like just staring down mashallah. um okay so as you can see I don't know if you can see in this picture but like down this hall every time you would come in or leave there's Amazon water everywhere I mean it is just an endless tap mashallah there's like um all these uh beautiful service workers women in this section obviously men in the men section and outside constantly filling and, and, and serving the people. And so you also see the service to, to humanity everywhere that you are. They're cleaning the rugs here. You know, there's, there's so much of that going on around you. And as we come out, obviously, but it's this post fudger sunrise has happened. And, um, so you come out and it's just the light. It's just, you know, it's like you, you, you've kind of, you know, as you say, like you, you know, you've kind of gone through the motions of the prayer and you do your salams and your peace and you just come out like with this serenity and in this space like obviously any prayer any anything is just so multiplied so you really feel that energy um, as you come out and just a beautiful architecture i just couldn't um i just kept seeing it and these are the shades i was talking about it really gives you um and this is back at the hotel like the i love medina sign <laughs> And then me with the Island and these design, of course. Um, and then this is my friend Shiva. And there was a moment when we were um, heading back to the masjid. I mean, the masjid was just like kept attracting us. <laughs> we come back to the hotel and be like, let's go back to the masjid. And so much I just caught her in a moment of, of, of deep uh, prayer. And, and you, know, you really just find yourself making dua. And like the dua kind of overflows in your... Um, and that's something that I'm, I'm trying to hold on to as well, because mashallah, so many people are in need of du'as, we're in need of du'as, and we ask people to make du'a for us, but so we should make du'a for them too. So really, like, this place really taught me how to, you know, do du'a all the time in your sleep, you wake up in the car, there's never, you should never be bored or be impatient, there's like time to make, like, dhikr and du'a and salawat, um, alhamdulillah. And so this is when, um, this mashallah is Hajj Hisham. He was uh, about to start a lecture and I saw him just kind of sitting and just, you know, like mashallah, just in his, in his space in Medina. Um, Hajj Hisham has taught a lot of people about the Shamail, about the, the characteristics of the Prophet. He taught a class about the Sita. Um, you know, he really has mashallah, such a love of the Sita and, and, and things like that. So he's a beautiful um, presence and teacher and that that's something that I would recommend if you're able to go you know with a good teacher with a good group you know you you you, you get so much more out of it obviously you're in these spaces but you're with somebody who can really even enhance um, the experience and yeah obviously the, <laughs> the geometric design um mashallah. so um you know we were in a group and you know he was giving a, a lecture a talk about you know just just sharing there's so much you know to be said about like what this um city was like you know what were the different trades like the different events that went happen. so we just kept walking around the courtyard and this mashallah is our first sight of, of of the dome and so in this current day you know this green dome subhanallah represents um the space where the prophet is buried where and, and he's buried where where it was his home you know um with with aisha radiallahu anh. 
um, and his other wives. And so this is a very like blessed space. And, you know, so this is, you know, it's like our first look and I just kept gazing it and it just all of these perspectives, I kept taking like these pictures because it felt like, you know, it's so about like I've listened to like nasheeds and different songs that are about the prophet and the longing for the prophet, like the Tajdar Haram, which is like this Qawwali, you know, Urdu song that just talks about like, you know, I'm at your gates and like, you know, help me. So like I, I sing that. I so have love that song and um, Ridia like loves that song too. So she's always like, you know, uh, Isi Mahine, like in this month we're gonna go to Medina. Let's Medina Chale, Medina Chale. So you know, I think like all of these songs that, you know, talk about Medina, talk about the Prophet Sallallahu it just comes to life as you're walking towards it, and, you know, coming near it and, you know, it's just experiencing its, its, its light. Um, so yeah, I love you guys. It's the beauty of Medina, Manawa, the city of light, the city of the Prophet. And as you're walking, like one of the, like you're, you know, you, you send salams uh, on the prophet. And then there's different ways of saying it. Um, um, I think for, you know, there's um, specific things and other things, but like, I think the one that I was reciting, I wrote down was, um, and you can just do salawat. It's like, sallallahu ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Um, um, and then there's there's one where you know you could say assalamu alaikum you had nabi wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu which is peace be upon you a prophet and the mercy of allah and his blessing so any any sort of version of salawat any version of saying you know i'm here i'm saying salam to you and i'm sending blessings upon you your family um, um just the brightness oh, video. oh this video is a retraction of the, of the uh, umbrellas and, and that's like and it's really quiet and it's like a little bit of this interesting screeching noise but i think it comes out more in the video than you know like so slow and methodical and it's amazing wanting to feel <laughs> um, you know, towards the one of the sides, um, the corners of, of, of the masjid, um, this is the cemetery, this is Bapi. Um, cemetery, um, and this is a, a blessed cemetery. This is where, subhanAllah, so many of the prophets, you know, family companions are are, are buried. Um, and and subhanAllah, if I understand correctly, anyone who passes away in Medina is is also allowed to be buried here. So it's a very expansive site and very blessed site. So subhanAllah, unfortunately, like a lot of the the graves are are not marked anymore because of certain you know, politics and, and things like that of the current day government. So that's one of the sad parts, but subhanAllah, like the, the presence, obviously it's still there. And, you know, you can look back in history to, to see who, who was buried there. Um, and this is another kind of uh, angle. And this is one of our other persons who were there, just an artistic angle. I'll tell you more about um, Ahmed. That was Baraka Blue, actually, a poet and friend who was on the trip. Um, and so then we were kind of walking back um, towards um, the, the inside of the masjid. And so much just it's more pictures of, 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 of this, not just, but like beautiful pictures. And I took this picture and, and remember this picture because at the end, um, I'll show you a picture from, from, from many years ago from my first Umrah in 2013. So I remember just sitting on the ground and, just, just uh, you know, being in the midst in black and white, you know, like you gotta go with that <laughs> look and flare, and obviously selfie. And you know, I think this is more than a selfie, Masha. Like, I mean, for me, it was just you know, I'm under the shade. You know, like may Allah always keep us under His shade. Um, you know, in this dunya and in the akhira. Um, you know, that's what we're really looking for. So just the the, the shade of uh, Allah. Um, 
Okay, so this is like a picture of like a screenshot of, of the phone and it just kind of shows you like, you know, this is just, you know, COVID, <laughs> COVID Umrah season, you had to have an app and you had to like get permits when you want to be at um, certain spaces and things like that. And so this is one of the, the, the permits this is actually for Mecca. So this is a little bit um, out of sequence, but it just gives you an idea that um, and you need to make an appointment for, for certain things like uh, seeing the Roda, which uh, I'll tell you more about and explain in just a little bit. Um, so this is our group and we're just having a nice conversation. You know, this is um, an exhibition that wasn't open yet, but it was right in the confines. I hope um, it's about the Prophet's mosque. And okay, this is like a really cool masjid, just right um, outside of the precincts of, um, uh, of the masjid, it's called Masjid Ramama, which is like the masjid of the clouds. And it's, it, got, it got its name because um, there was like a drought one year and the Prophet Sallallahu made um, uh, prayer for rain here. And so mashallah, like uh, uh, you can read more about it, but um, that was one of the, the, the stories behind this and it rained mashallah and, and it was covered. It was also like the place where I feel like um, uh, Haji Sham was telling us about um, uh, the, the king of Abyssinia um, was here and, and I'm, I'm really, I feel bad because I've forgotten the story. So we can all be reminded and look it up, Mashid Khamama, Google it. Um, <laughs> I know my lessons learned, <laughs> but I'm gonna go back and, and read about it. But there's just so much history. And I think if anything, like I, I felt like just history did come alive. It really did. Um, and, and now like, you know, and, and, and seeds were planted. So now when you go back to the Sira or you go back to like reading about certain events that occurred that you're just like, okay, wait, I was there and, and this is what it looked like and this is where it was. And I think there's such importance to that. And one of the beautiful reasons of visiting these, these holy sites. Um, this is that Mashal um, Mama participant. And just kind of looking back to, to Inside, I think it's inside. Right? Well, this is like a food. We, yeah, well, it's time for we gotta eat. <laughs> so this is an Indian restaurant. We we went to KFC a bunch of times too. I mean, like you know. Um, so, say again. I, don't, I think it was. Yeah, it was like little. <laughs> um, these are a bunch of tasbis I brought from the market and um, obviously Sohib's uh, tasbis right there as well but um, you know I wanted to make dhikr and talawat on these on these uh, tasbis and so like I would bring it to the masjid with me and just constantly just do dhikr on them and it was just such a you know um, beautiful exercise for me and you know um, I was able to to do you know, gifted to people, inshallah. This was inside the hotel. Yes, this is food with a view. Like literally you can see the masjid from inside of this hotel. It just shows you how close it was. Really good food buffet. Um, you know, this is just a picture of like the outside near the highway. And I just took it because like beauty, like you can have beauty on the highway. Like this is a highway ramp to somewhere. Um, Okay, so this is um, Masjid Quba. So like um, on our trip, uh, we went as a group to different sites outside of Medina. And so there were different um, masjids that we visited. And, you know, they call this ziyarat, you know, like a, in, maybe it's a new term for you all. It just means like a, a pilgrimage or a visit to a holy site. Um, so we did ziyarat to a couple of different um, important spaces outside of the, the Masjid Nabawi itself. And um, Masjid Quba. See, yeah, this is Masjid Kuba. Um, and down. So this Masjid um, is where the Prophet Sallallahu and Abu Bakr stayed in Medina after they did their Hijra. So that's why this Masjid is like, you know, obviously like a super um, important um, space. Um, it's just beautiful, like just, just you know, like the the, ge the geometry, and I'm there, and I don't know, of course, just me. <laughs> and you know, Subhanallah, like I also took this picture because it also shows you the separation, and you know, like obviously, like you know, there's this, you know, separation can sometimes be difficult, especially on women when there are certain barriers, you know, and, and so I just, for me, I just wanted to kind of point out that separation can be beautiful as well. It can be done with Ihsan, it can be done with beauty, and to always kind of remember that in, in all of our spaces, you know, like you can have certain 
things your limitations, but do it beautifully. Um, and so I didn't feel like I missed out on anything because it was such a gorgeous space for, for both parties. Um, this is Amani, one of our organizers from the Nural Hada trip. The other organizer was Brother Iftikhar. Um, so we're just really happy. And um, yeah, so um, I think that... <laughs> So if I'm not mistaken, this is the masjid um, near um, this whole area called like the seven mosques. And um, this one in particular is called like Masjid Fath, where the battle of the trench took place. And um, uh, the Prophet some obviously prayed here, but there was like, you know, this, this, this battle. And I think it's also known as uh, Ghazwa Khandaq. Um, and mashallah, like, you know, just again, like just the sira, like just came alive. It was really just, you know, you read about these things and it doesn't always, it didn't hit my heart until like being in these spaces and just like feeling like, well, this is where other people stood. Like, this is where our prophet, the Sahaba, like, you know, this is where they were. Um, and just these uh, structures. And obviously this is not like how it looked <laughs> when it was, these are, um, you know, uh, definitely reconstructions and, and things like that. But khair, that's all. Although like the next one that we'll see, this part, this area is called the Seven Mosques and this one was Masjid Abu Bakr. So this was a smaller space. And this definitely, I think is obviously, um, not obviously from that era, but like still as, as close to it as it can be. It was a small little space, but just really, you know, it's felt like this presence. There's Masjid Abu Bakr, Masjid Umar, Masjid Asad bin Muad, Masjid Ali, Masjid Fatma Zahra, and then Masjid Kabutin, and Masjid Al Saban Al Farsi. These are like small spaces, and they're just known as the seven mosques. So we were just kind of going to some of them. Um, you can see, I think you can see Masjid Ali through the, the window here. It's a gorgeous round window. Um, and so um, then we went up this hill. Um, I think this, this was Masjid Umar. I remember correctly, we prayed in here as well. Um, and this again is of the highway because it's just really beautiful. And I was like, highways can be really pretty, you know? Uh, so really, honestly, you can have beauty anywhere and, and everywhere um, to do things with Ehsan. Um, okay, so this is another masjid that we were going towards. Um, so, okay, subhanAllah. So this is the area of where the, of Mount Uhud. Um, so the battle of Uhud took place and um, subhanAllah, I mean, I think this space, like, you know, as Haj Sham like stood there and, you know, was trying to tell us about, you know, the battle of Uhud, which was like a difficult battle. It was a battle where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, was hurt as well. And, um, you know, there was the army like retreated as well. And, you know, there was there was a lot of things that happened and, I, and you know, please do go back and read about it, but it really like, SubhanAllah, like just, you know, like you, you really felt like the, all the challenges, you know, like this is how our Ummah was built, you know, this is our prophet who is on the battlefield, you know, he was, you know, a prophet who was, you know, not on the sidelines, he was in it. And, um, and all the Sahaba and the Sahabiyat, you know, like all of them, men, women, you know, Radia's middle name is Nuseba because uh, Rumeisa and Nuseba were, were, you know, part of, you know, the whole hijra and and Nuseba was a warrior and so like men and women were on the battlefield and you know this is where our ummah was 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 you know where things began the cat of course there's cats everywhere mashallah and um this is called the masjid shuhada there's a couple of different names for this masjid um because there's a burial um cemetery um where um hamza radil an um, is buried in many other Sahabas who lost their lives um, in that battle and otherwise. It's also a beautiful masjid um, inside. So we prayed for Chudakas in there. I took a picture of this because I thought it was so cool. Like it's a sitting thing, you close it, you can read, you could be on the floor reading. It was just so versatile. Like we, we need more things like this. Um, Alhamdulillah. And obviously the, the design and the architecture, you know. We gotta bring this back here. We gotta, we gotta make our architecture. 
mashallah, like someone from our group just going down, just, just opening this corridor. Um, yes, Jamia uh, Sayyid al Shahada, Mr. Shahada. And Shahada just basically means the martyrs, the people who died during uh, battle. So um, now we're back in Medina. I think this was probably Fajr time. I'm, I'm assuming it's my friend Sheba, Princeton alum. You guys should connect with her. Um, just taking notes and reading Quran, just the majesty of the inside of Medina. And, um, and so, you know, I wanted to kind of mention um, at this point, like my, um, one of my interesting stories that happened. Um, so after Fajr one, one day, it's my, I call it my Roda story. And the Roda to define that, basically the Roda is the place where the Prophet Sallallahu lived. And, um, and it is considered a really sacred space. And, you know, some people, and it's said that it's basically like a piece of Jannah, a piece of paradise on earth. And and so that's called the Roda. That's the space where he lived and his pulpit was where he came out and then where he um, preached. And so this Roda, so like my Roda story goes something like this, that, you know, SubhanAllah, like that space uh, generally um, in other um, Umrah Zara Hajj, it, it's very difficult. It's a small space. There's so many people who are trying to buy for it. Um, and, um, for, but this time you had to make an appointment for it. So, um, I made an appointment and I got one for Wednesday and it was Monday and I was just like longing to go, you know, I was just like, I just really want to go. And my friends had told me, listen, like, you know, just go try just, you know, at least you can go there. And if they let you in, maybe, you know, so I had that in the back of my head. So it was Monday, it was after, um, Fudger, um, and, um, you know, I told my friend, I was like, I'm tired. I'm just going to go back to the hotel. I'm going to sleep a little bit. And so I left her as I came out. I just felt this longing. I was like, I need to go say salam to the prophet. So I was like, okay, instead of going right, I went left and I started going, you know, towards the dome. And, um, subhanAllah, as I'm walking, like there's this girl in front of me, um, who was kind of like fast paced and running. And as she's running so you know um in front of me she drops her a card and i see it and i quickly pick it up and it's like a id card it's from new york i can see it's like new york state id and then i'm like wait and but she's running so i'm like okay now i gotta run so now i'm running and literally i'm running after her and she's fast like and these are marble floors and they were being mopped so like i was just like it's not easy so I kept following her and like literally she kept going around and I kept following her. And there was this one other, there's a, another woman who came from the, my side and she's like, I'm really proud of you. You're like really trying. I'm like, I'm trying and like I'm going. And so like that person um, went around the corner and so I, I lost her. And, and I, as I came around, like I was like, where is she? And so she was wearing like a black abaya, but as I turned around, like a sea of black abayas. So I've completely wow. lost her. No other marks of uh, anything. So, but I've lost her, but where have I found myself? I have found myself near the entrance to the gate of the, the you know, the entrance that will eventually lead to the Roda. So there's a security guard. This is the first security guard. And, you know, people are showing, um, you know, your app, you know, cause you have to have an appointment and he's saying no to people. And then I show him the thing and I should have the card in front of me too. And I'm just like, and he can't understand me like when, and my Arabic is weak. And so I'm like, I have someone's ID and I need to go in. And he's like, okay, he let me in. And I was like, what? So I got through the first, uh, first section. And then you, then you stand in lines. Um, there's, you know, a couple of lines I'm standing in solely. And then I'm just like, I can't use this card. Like I've lost her. Like, what am I going to say? And this security guard are two women and they, so I didn't even show them the card. I just then pulled out my phone. I, I had that app open and I showed them the, the, um, the date for my uh, appointment. And they looked at it and they knew like it wasn't right because they're checking. And so she started like doing something with my phone numbers. Like, I don't know what she's doing. And then lo and behold, she hits cancel on the appointment that I have, but she hits cancel, but lets me in. And so I'm in. And subhanAllah, like my, it's, it's weird. My heart was like up here and sinking at the same time because I'm just like, I didn't want to lose that appointment, but I'm in. And so alhamdulillah, I come in and I quickly go back to my app and I remake the appointment that I had for Wednesday. So that's done and I am inside. I have like passed these barriers and I am 
subhanAllah, like they're just like, okay, sit in this section and you know, you're making your prayers there. And, um, and I'm just like, Ya Allah, like I longed for this. And Allah's just like, you know, you come with me, you come a couple of steps towards me and I'm going to, you know, like meet you fully and, and wholly there. Um, and then the Prophet Sallallahu love and, you know, so I'm in there, um, we wait there for about like five minutes or so, and then we get shuttled into the main area and subhanAllah, like into this section. And this section is like, you know, like you're, I can't describe it. It's just so beautiful. It's just, you know, you're, you're, you're in, you're on Jannah on earth, like, cause literally this is where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam lived. This is where he preached. This is where, you know, Islam was like just born. Um, and you sit there and you're just making dua and you're just like, your heart is just like full, you know, and you just, you just don't even know where you are. And I, I just, I mean, I just, I mean, the story was just like, uh, I just couldn't. And I, and I come out, I remember, I don't have any pictures because I don't, uh, by the way, this is about me and pictures. I love taking pictures, but I also know when I don't want to take pictures because I want to also be in the moment. And so this story is all in my head and my heart. It's not in pictures because I didn't take out my camera once in the Roda because it just didn't feel like, a, you know, because you the picture has this quality of also changing the space anytime you take out something. So um, so I have no pictures, just memories and, and, and my reflections. And it's about like the end to that story is that mashallah, we have 10 minutes, you know, there's like a clock on the side. You, you spend 10 minutes in the Roda and then I'll show you come out and I'm just like my heart's full I'm just like I can't believe this just happened and then so I still have this card for this girl and I'm just like I should return this and, you know maybe she's looking for it so I looked her up on Facebook because that's what you do right <laughs> when you look up I need to find people and um so I found her um but apparently she wasn't active as much so I messaged her on there but I didn't get a reply I saw a mutual friend so then I texted this mutual friend in Medina texting this random girl saying I have an ID of this other person do you have her number she sent me her whatsapp number I whatsapp this girl and she whatsapp me back saying this is amazing thank you for like you found you know like for, for you to consider this and write like my heart is so great but uh don't worry about it that's expired and you can throw that out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, my ticket was to get in but like yeah so i put that off and it was, it was done for so that's my roda story that's what part of my roda story amazing. just you know um you know really just you know long for things allah's listening to your heart the prophet is listening to your heart um, SubhanAllah, this is an excursion that we took to a museum, mashallah, this was really, this is a new museum in the last three, four years, I believe, um, just right on the outskirts of Medina. This is a really, like, this amazing dates, the, you know, the hospitality of having dates everywhere. Um, this is a Darul Medina Museum, and there was like a really nice um, tour guide who, you know, showed us all of these spaces, there were all these models that were made of the city outside of the city so you could just get like a landscape view of of, of how things were um and so this is definitely a must uh, go if you inshallah when you go on umrah or hajj to visit this place with the tour guide um and this is you know like the covering to the kaaba it, it it has had different forms and this is you know one of it as, as you can see so they have this and i there's probably there's so much data like about when this is from and, and things like that um, and just um, obviously remembering the prophet and um, yeah, the beauty of all of that. Um, and this camel, you know, uh, this is this one like uh, you know the prophet Muhammad had a had a camel named Quswa. I think if I'm um, saying that right. Um, and this camel, Subhanallah, you know, was with him. Um, and different battles and and, and, and and places. So this is his beloved uh, camel, Qaswa. It was a female camel belonging to the Prophet. And I think uh, she was with him in the Battle of Badr, the conquest of Mecca, and during even the Hijra. And, 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 and she lived on after the Prophet was so died. That's why. Um, and yeah, so just another look up the museum and these are you know the models of this is basically trying to show what the prophet's mosque should look like back early on um and how it was built and, um and this you know the shapes about like you know the the um, tour guide was explaining to us that they didn't want the shape to be a cube because they didn't want 
anything to resemble the Kaaba. So like this, this is a ver this is basically where the Prophet um, lived. Like this is his home um, or room, as you can say. But like they made like the the they made the shape so it wouldn't be a cube. So it was more of a pentagon. So I remember like hearing about that, and that was an interesting. Uh, Way. And subhanAllah, so the roda that I talk about, like the, 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 the place is basically here. It's, it's just, it would be right here that we were able to enter. I mean, obviously it's like a bigger space um, where people are entering, but this is where now subhanAllah our, the Prophet Sallallahu is buried. Um, Umar radiallahu is buried and Ali radiallahu is buried. And so just these are different models. It's hard to see, but like, yes. And then they built, um, Oh, this is a again Princeton, man. Princeton, mashallah. This student on the left is Sheba, obviously on the trip with me. But this is Saud, also a student from back in the day. Uh, Saud is originally from Qatar. Um, you know, spent so much time here and um, is back in Qatar these days. So you know, he found out I was going to be in Umrah, and he was like, "I'm in Medina, so let's meet up." So we went out for for dinner one day. So Alhamdulillah, you know, Princeton's everywhere and stay connected. Um, back at the masjid and you know a few last looks and you, you know you could see like the light coming out post fajr um <laughs> and then a couple of <laughs> posed pictures um, of the space but you know just spaces where it just endless dhikr endless dua endless salawat um you can see on the side, these are some some models and so you, you, know, you can drink, make dua. Um, yeah, I gotta make a gif. <laughs> uh, I was really happy just to just be there and my prayer mat that I had. Um, and a cat, obviously. <laughs> uh, it was also raining. We were blessed with the rain, both in Medina and um, in Mecca, when we were in Arafala, we were... <laughs> This is near the bazaar. It was one of the persons was doing calligraphy on um, the prayer mat. So there's a lot of cool things uh, near the bazaar area. Yeah, um, and then um, the last night that we were at Medina was was when they wanted to do the tribute for Sahib. Um, May Allah have mercy on his soul. Um, so this was just near Masjid Ghamama. We just kind of sat and um, I said a few words and just reflected on his legacy and, and, and his life. And I also read a poem that Suhaib had written when he was um, in Medina. And Suhaib's not a poet. Obviously, he was amazing with words and, and things like that. So I guess he's a poet in some ways. But it was one of uh, the few poems that he had ever written. And it's online, so I'd love if you guys looked it up. Um, I don't think I have time to read it, but that's what I read over there at the end um, called Journey to Medina. And just, just really beautiful. And the addendum to that is that um, uh, Baraka Blue that I mentioned before, um, who is an actual poet and, you know, so many things that much. He runs uh, this organization called Wasat in California, in Seattle, sorry. Um, and, um, but uh, he goes by Baraka Blue and his, his name is Ahmed. So um, Ahmed came up to me and he's like, this is beautiful. I, you know, it's the first time I've heard this poem. And, you know, I've written a poem about Mecca the last time I was at Umrah, but Medina I haven't written about. Can I you know, this is really inspiring me. Can I add to this poem? Can I do something with this poem? And there's a tradition um, about like adding, you know, lines to, to poetry that's there. And he's like, I'm gonna keep the integrity of this poem, but just, you know, add to it. And I was like, sure, do do what you want, mashallah. And so so he, with my permission, he, he worked on something. And, you know, um, by the time we arrived in Mecca, he was like, I have it ready, <laughs> mashallah. He worked on it on the, on the, on the ride there and, and and I got to listen to it and he published it online so you can also find that online and it just embellishes and adds to, to Sahib's um, poem and I remember hearing it and it's really my heart like was just I think my heart has been like 
cracked open in so many ways. Like I just, there was just so much love, like the love in the road, the, the love just being this way, the love of things and the love of these poetry and like of these words, you know, like you never know when the words will hit you and it just hit me. It hit me so, so much. And this is what I always say, like, so he spent his life, you know, trying to, you know, impart, you know, the, the love of the Prophet Sallallahu And, you know, I wasn't there yet. Like I, I, I could see his love for, for him and I could see a lot of people's love, but I wasn't there until, you know, these moments on this trip, really like I, I felt this love and it is just genuine and it's beautiful. And, you know, it's, um, it really opens you up and it, it makes you so forgiving and it really makes you, you know, tries to instill a lot of those characteristics because if you love the Prophet Sallallahu and you want to do things that he loves and you know, how he acted and, and lived in the world. And there's so much to say about that, mashallah. This is a view back into Medina from this, this site. Um, so we're headed back and this is the, this is the, <laughs> I loved how this just came up on my phone, like praying in the double <laughs> roda, like women. This is the appointment for the night. This is the Wednesday night um, roda visit. So this, it, this itself was also just something else. This is a gate. This is the only picture I took as I walked in. Um, and subhanAllah, this was also another gift, another, to be able to visit the roda twice, like big deal, like you know, uh, men sometimes get to do that generally, but like women, it's, it's harder and we have limited times, limited access. And subhanAllah during COVID, because there were such few people at Umrah, things were just so much easier. And easy, even as you go in, you hit space. And so as I walked in, like, I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know the space because I've never really been in this space. And when I walked in, subhanAllah, like, you know, you're just, you're there, you're the grill, like that we saw in the model where the kubur are, where the graves are, you're sitting right there. I looked up and I saw like the graves. And I think that for me, like, again, like life changing because you just, you see it. I mean, like your eyes can't unsee something like so magnificent as, as that. And this is where, you know, our beloved Prophet Sallam, you know, is buried next to, you know, the, the, the caliphs. Um, so just really a moment. And so, yeah, so that was my moment. No pictures, nothing. Then we come back out from the other side and, you know, we gaze at the, at the dome once again, you know, head back and a couple of selfies post row the moment, alhamdulillah. And, um, you know, you do your last salams. And the next day we were um, headed um, by, this is the train station. And so this is also newly built. So a lot of people haven't experienced this. Um, the, the people would always take the, the bus or, other transportations, but this train station was built in the last couple of years and it's great. It's a uh, it just random flower bunch that was just really pretty. Um, the inside was really cool, looked very kind of uh, space sci-fi-ish. Um, and this is the bullet train, um, really nice, so comfortable. Um, um, so we're, you know, salams to Medina and the Prophet And so this is inside and it's yeah, really nice board, destination Mecca. And, I mean, obviously selfie on the, on the really comfortable space. And this is where, you know, now you are, you know, getting into your Umrah, like into your, you know, mode of, okay, now I'm heading towards Umrah, towards the Kaaba. And, you know, like the, we had a lot of pages open and this is something that obviously um, a lot of us might've heard is labbaik, Allahumma labbaik, labbaik, la shirika laka labbaik, inna alhamda wa ni'mata laka wal mulk la shirika lak. So here I am at your service, oh Lord, here I am. Here I am, no partner do you have, here I am. Truly the praise and the favor is yours and the sovereignty, no partner do you have. And this is just this chant that you just, you know, keep saying and, you know, you have it near and close. And so throughout like the, the, the um, train ride, um, in and out of sleep, because I was also sleeping on the train, it was really comfortable and, and nice. Um, you start, you know, saying this. Um, and you know, like the idea of, of Ihram, like we, we hadn't, um, uh, so by this time we are, you know, we had spoken about Ihram. So basically when you're doing Umrah, you have to be in a state of Ihram. Ihram isn't just the clothing that you wear, but it's a state of being, um, and so you can't do certain things that you would normally do. Just like in Ramadan where you normally eat, you don't, but in the state of Ihram, you can't have certain fragrances and you can't cut your, nails and you can't you know do certain things and so you're in this real state of like 
you know, servanthood and you're just, you're going into this space. And so this was just a view outside the window. I don't think this is. It's just really super, super. Uh, People were like impressed. They were like, oh, it only took an hour, and I think it was an hour and 30 minutes or something. Or it would take hours and hours. This is really And then, yeah. So it's just, just kind of telling us when we're going to arrive. This is the speed, 200, but it's obviously not miles, but it's kilometers, but you can, but it's pretty fast. I think I did the math, <laughs> but 299 kilometers. Um, you could be doing your, your um, talbiya, as they call it, the labbaik. And we've arrived in Mecca, mashallah. And this is beautiful. This is, we're gonna all do it together. And I think this video should turn on. لك والملك لا شريك لك لبيك اللهم لبيك لبيك لا شريك لك لبيك إن الحمد والنعمة لك والملك لا شريك لك لبيك اللهم لبيك لبيك لا شريك لك لبيك إن الحمد والنعمة لك والملك Otherwise, you do. <laughs> so this is where I think the salawat. Did we start the salawat? <laughs> So now you see the precincts of the haram um, in which the Kaaba is housed, the house of Allah, um, obviously construction. And, you know, also this picture is so revealing because, you know, Mecca, even back in the day, obviously was known as a city of 
of trade and and, 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 and and things being bartered in business. And so like, it had that feel, you know, um, as you come in, okay. And mashallah, this is, you know, it's like you keep your eyes down and you kind of come towards, especially people who have never seen the Kaaba, even people who have, you just kind of keep your eye down until you come to the space and then you open it and you just, mashallah, see this majestic, you know, like, there's, there's just beauty like emanating from the Kaaba. It's it's just a simplified, simplistic structure, you know, a cube of all things, but it just weighs its history um, and um, the magnanimity of it. And and also just, you know, like you realize like you pray towards this all the time, like you're all your prayers, you're like, where's the Qibla, where's the Qibla? And, um, and so you're here, the Qibla is everywhere. You know, one thing I forgot to do is bring out my phone to see with the Qibla app to see like, is it gonna freak out? Like, where's the Qibla? But I didn't need to bring out my app. Like I knew where the Qibla was. The Qibla is everywhere, anywhere that you can be around. And, you know, SubhanAllah, I think just, you know, for me, like, you know, like obviously you're there, but like the Qibla, like this is the Qibla of your heart state when, when you're not near, you know, like, one should come back and like look for that qibla in our lives, in our spaces, you know, like really look for that qibla and it'll, it'll orient you and navigate you um, in the right direction. And so, we've done certain rituals, obviously with that, you have to read, you know, two surahs before you leave and, um, and you have to, um, one thing that I think we, I skipped over here, um, is that you have to start at Masjid Aisha, which is called like the Miqat. Miqat just means boundary. So you have to like leave the precinct of the Haram before you can start Umrah. So, so we went to Masjid Aisha, um, in a bus, um, we did our, 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 we started our, did our, you know, prayer there. I like you to do read two surahs and you, you know, make that intention that I'm going to start Umrah. Then we come back and that's how you do it. And if you want to do Umrah again, and some people did Umrah twice, I did it twice, then you have to go back to Masjid Aisha and start over. So like, that's how um, the ritual is. And, and, and there's beauty in that. And um, the Umrah itself is, is subhanAllah simple. Like it's, it's like, you know, it's, it's doing tawaf you know, seven times, which basically means going around the Kaaba seven times with certain rituals in between where you're, you know, sending Psalms towards like the black stone at certain points, you're asking for forgiveness when you're coming around a certain section. And otherwise you're just making endless du'a in whatever language and whatever your heart feels. Um, so I made, you know, just anything that comes to your mind. And you're also just remembering the magnanimity of, of Allah, his, his beautiful, you know, characteristics, his names um, and remembering him. And so that's the tawaf is part of it. And then there's sa'i, which is basically the idea of walking between the, the two mountains of Safa and Marwa. And that basically recounts the story of Lady Hagar, um, Hajar alayhi salam, you know, when she was um, left in um, that area uh, by Prophet Ibrahim because he was asked by Allah. And she was with uh, Ishmael, her, her baby, and she was looking for water and sustenance and she started running and you know so she was very perseverance and and then that's a whole the whole story of Zamzam she taps and like there's water that gushes out and that's the whole story of Zamzam and you know what we tap into and um so that's the the idea of um Umrah and so you know we had, we started doing our tawaf and this is where the sa'i is and so like I think the first time I went to Umrah I was like wait where's the mountains and why are we not walking on gravel but so in the modern day like these are paved, um, marbled, <laughs> paved, and um, I took off my shoes. I wanted to kind of just experience it. And so you're kind of walking and, and this is this big um, light is basically where the mountain is. So, and, and in the past you could actually step on the mountain because of COVID regulations, they've kind of limited it. But but these are the mountains of Safa and Marwa that you read about in the Sira. Um, and so when you're going through these, obviously you're doing rituals, you're doing your dua, um, and so while you're walking in, in the footsteps of Lady Hajar alayhi salam, and for me, this was such a profound moment. Um, I, you know, I think in this, as, as you guys know, in my journey um, of losing Sahib and, you know, being a single parent and raising Radia, like, I mean, I, I felt so close to the story. I felt like this was something that I was able to walk and do and make dua and 
that there is perseverance and that Allah is, you know, like I think for me, the, the, the story of last year has been like, can I do this? Can I do this by myself? Can I live? Can I raise her? Like, how am I going to do it? And, and alhamdulillah, I've, I've gotten the strength from um, you all and love and, you know, from Allah and just found the strength to, to, to live this beautiful life that's been given. I'm so grateful for every day that I have. And, um, but this really just helped me. Like, this is something I need to do. And I did it once with the group. Like, mashallah, the group was there. You know, we did the tawaf together and we did the sa'i together. But when I did my second umrah and I did that in, in, in memory of Sahib as well, like I, I did that on my own. I remember telling um, uh, Haji Sham and others, I'm like, I'm just going to do this by myself. And they're, and they're like, OK, we'll send some with, with, with you. And I'm like, no, I got to do this by myself. And so they, they were like, OK, no, I understand what you're saying. And, and you know, again, it was such a metaphor because they were right there. I could see them. You know, they're just right you know, there but I was doing it by myself. So just, you know, it's such a profound um, moment for me. And, and I think these, and, and, and this is just my story. Everyone has a story at Umrah. Everyone's there for a need and, you know, a challenge that they're going through and, you know, you're a different season of your life. And this is where Umrah performers, I love how they had that exit. And so you've done your, your tawaf, you've done your sa'i, um, and at the end of it, you know, you cut a piece of hair, men uh, and have the option to, to shave their head. Um, and so we come back and so now when we're done, then we'll take the picture. <laughs> we took a, a group picture of these of the people that we kind of stood together, like we went around um, together. And this is Haj Hisham in the middle, as I mentioned before. He's um, currently a teacher for Lanterna, which is a really great resource for learning. And you know, smile, like I took this picture in front of the Kaaba, but I took it more to like and later I was looking at it and I looked at myself and there was just something about it that just didn't feel right um, then and now. And, and I think it's, it's this idea that you don't turn away from the Kaaba, like you have to be looking at it. And I think, you know, like the Kaaba is like, that's your direction, whether you're, you know, your shoulders to it or your face. So, so I learned something about like, you know, any of the pictures that I took when I'm facing the Kaaba, it's just has been so much more meaningful and, and, and bright and, and things like that than facing away from it. And so this is a picture that, um, you know, really, mashallah, like I, my heart feels happy um, versus looking away from it. Um, and we had uh, right after Umrah, like there was a portion in, in Haji Sham took us to that that is not marked. Obviously, this just says this is a library, but he was saying that subhanAllah, this, this might be the space where the Prophet was born. And obviously, because again of the politics of the current day regime, like things are not marked in such a way. But so this was like a really holy, special place. And so he was pointing out the different spaces around that are not marked. Um, which is an overview of, of the whole complex of the Haram in which the Kaaba is. This is the whole expansion. This happened in the last couple of years, actually, because in 2013, this was not there. Um, and it's just really gorgeous. Like you go inside and it's just, just beauty in every level and every space, just intricate. Um, and of course, <laughs> the Tazbis with me um, throughout. Um, it's the, the gorgeousness of the space. And it's just really large, like the doors. We did our Jumma prayers there. Um, it was interesting, Masha. Jumma was great, but I was like, man, I'm so far from the Kaaba. Like, you know, but like not everyone can be in that, that space all the time. But it was this longing because you're like there and you just like want to be near it and you want to be close to it, but you can't be there all the time, obviously. Um, especially now, there, there's also uh, you have to get your permits and stuff. So, through metric design and me. Profile picture on my Facebook. <laughs> okay, so let me see a couple more things. And you know, subhanAllah, there's this, okay, so alhamdulillah, I, I much love the next day was able to come close to here. Um, there was just this pillar like right before you enter the, 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 the space. And I just, kind of stood here um, and I pulled out like my dua book and I pulled out especially the supplications from the airplane that I had taken the, the screenshots. And I just started reciting and like, you know, it was just like, I just like lost in dua. Like it was just such a moment. And there was this woman who kind of came and stood next to me and I kind of saw her, but she was just kind of right there and she stood just next to me and she, you know, and I just kept reading my duas and people were coming and I was there for like, you know, 
you know, at least, I don't know, I don't know how long, but for, for quite some time and just pouring out. And, um, and then at the end, she was like, she was like, oh, I just saw you, like, you were just like in this zone. So I was like, I'm going to stand next to you and make my thought too. So much like just, you know, I think that's, it was so beautiful. And I think that's so pretty. Like, if you ever see someone like by themselves, like in, in prayer or whatever, you should sit next to them, like really like give them that comfort, take from them. Like there's peace all around, there's angels. So like, you know, stand in, in the baraka of this presence. And this is the second level. So um, there was a point where, you know, I wanted to just be near the Kaaba. I wanted to read Quran. So this is like uh, an area from the second level and just also a gorgeous view. And you can see, and subhanAllah, you know, the amount of people that you see, like this is unprecedented. <laughs> like normally that entire space is full of Umrah and Hajj is just like intense. So this is very, very few people. And um, for me, it was a blessing because I was able to really go in and out easily no pushing, no nothing. Um, it was it was really um, an amazing um, experience. Um, and the waf itself, you know, just a bit of Um, so I, this is back at the hotel. I was at the Hilton, which was again, just up the hill, super close. Everything was just, mashallah, like too convenient. Um, so smooth. This journey, every step of the way for me was just so smooth. There was a Quran exhibition in the lobby. I was like, wow, okay, let's go check this out. And um, I just put a few slides in here because it was just a reminder of, you know, the Quran, like the, you know, what it's about, like, how it affects your life, the virtues, the healing. And again, you know, Sahib loved the Quran, they really, you know, wanted people to engage with it and reflect with it. It had the dabbar. You know, this side was about, you know, just really engaging with it and feeling it. And yes, you haven't memorized it, but that's okay. Like if you're trying to like really reflect on it and, and live it. And, um, you know, I really, uh, you know, my intention, may Allah make it so, is, is to see if I can bring this exhibition to the States, you know, like near us somewhere, because I really felt it was um, such a beautiful thing for, for, for anybody, um, for humanity, for Muslims and otherwise, anyone who would benefit from it. So these were just some slides that, um, you know, I saw and found visually. Um, now this is going back, and again, okay, let me just say this about pictures, is that when I was doing tawaf, I was not taking any pictures, or umrah, like, I was in my zone, like, that was my ibadah, and so after I did everything is when I went back, and I was like, okay, this tawaf is, like, not really a tawaf, this is my picture at tawaf, so I took a lot of these, some of the pictures around tawaf when I was um, actually done um, with it um just some geometry this is a this is the hilton actually where we were so i just wanted to take a picture of, to show like the the prettiness um we're back on the bus and um i think haji sham is making salawat as usual um <laughs> It's just beautiful. And um, this time we went and saw some of the sites outside of Mecca. We saw some of the mountains, you know, um, there wasn't an opportunity to, to climb um, like the, the Mount Hira, you know, like where the Prophet Sallallahu was received revelation. This isn't, um, this is different. This is, um, you know, this is another mountain. Which mountain is this? This is Jabal Thor. So this is, uh, this is the story where um, the Prophet Sallallahu Someone can tell me the story. There's a story. There's so many zero stories. But, you know, um, you can also climb this mountain. And some of the people from the group actually were, were able to do it. Um, but I wasn't this time. So, again, there, there's so many opportunities. But just to kind of um, be close to, you know, these spaces. And, and this is, mashallah, we were able to go near uh, Mount Arafah. And, and this was really special. Obviously, during Hajj, you know, this is part of the ritual to be to be there. But we we were there. We climbed up the, the steps um, all the way up, and you know, like fasting on the day of Arafah, you know, which which falls like on the ninth day of Dhul Hijj, you know, um, before the 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 big Eid. Um, is, is a really special day. And, um, you know, it's a day when your sins are forgiven. It's, it's a day of real reflection. Um, 
And so, you know, the skies were open. Um, we were able to just stand up there on, on this mountain, Mount Arafa, this part of it. And it was really special because obviously this is not, this is Umrah, it's not Hajj. We we're able to experience a part of um, what you would normally do during Hajj here. You just, you know, you just make dua. Like you're with Allah here. You're with Allah everywhere, but it's real palpable here. And um, alhamdulillah, mashallah. Um, two young women from our group, um, college students, just like yourselves. <laughs> and here you could see the, the other mountains. I think I think um, Uhud might be at the outskirts that you could see from there as well. So well, this is a picture of this um, beautiful. These are these are people part of our group, and this 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 this, um, this woman, mashallah, you know, had, had come on. Umrah before, but this is the first time she was able to, to walk up to, to Mount Arafah and she's an elderly woman. And so her daughter was there helping her and other people from the group. And it's just such a moment, you know, like you, you, you see, you know, everyone is there for a need, you know, different ages and places that they're at. And then it started raining, like, can you believe it? So not only in Medina, but in Mecca and of all places, you know, in, in Mount Arafah. And, and, and you know, Samala, the, the story about the rain that I'll say is that we were delayed in coming here because our bus was late. And you know, like, it's not like people are patient, but like, it just shows you, like, you just don't know what you're being like primed for. Like, you don't know, you feel like you're missing out when you're actually gonna like get the best. And so we were able to experience this rain because we were quite literally delayed for, for a while until we got here. And so then, then the skies just opened up and you know, you could see the, it was just, what a moment, you know, like the skies. Just, Alhamdulillah. And um, on this bus ride, we also just drove past where Mina would be. So another um, ritual during Hajj, one of the places where you spend the night in a tent. Um, and this is another part. We're back at the Haram. We're back at, um, you know, in, in um, uh, where the Kaaba is. Oh, this is a, a food picture. Koshiri, an Egyptian dish. Uh, I never had it. It was really tasty. Um, really recommend it. I need to find a good kosher in here. Me, it's like amazing. It's all these different carbs. I guess you can't go wrong with carbs, but like pasta, there's like. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, and um, again, like Masha, I was so blessed to be able to, you know, be able to come back to to the this the space. You had to make an appointment on your app. Alhamdulillah, we was able to to do that and have access. And this 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 uh, I saw this delegation. I think they were from um, Uzbekistan, if I'm not mistaken. I think their bags were saying that. And you just you know like Suratul Muslimin, man. Like they're just walking the straight path. This is <laughs> this is straight. And it was just just so symbolic and so beautiful to to kind of see. Um, Mashallah again, you know, just just the beauty and majesty. It was like in the inner rows, very close to where the Kaaba was. Just again, what a, what a gift to, to 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 have that. And as we passed around, I know we didn't take, I didn't have any pictures, but there's obviously this huge black stone, which is very um, sacred to our tradition, and you know has like a history. There's so many stories behind it, not only from um, you know Prophet Ibrahim and and his time, but Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and how it was placed and what it means and people you know, send their salams and avoid that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. People kind of keep coming in and also keep coming out and so it's just such fluidity. The people in wheelchairs were able to be on even in the inner side, which was really nice. So they had their own. Look! Look at this. Uh, um, just uh, the um, orderliness. I think they definitely like COVID taught everyone how to be orderly. Like people were like walking in lines. It's like, oh, that makes sense. And Alhamdulillah, you know, had had the Tazbi with me, had Sahib with me. I, I did one of the prayers just right in the in the courtyard of of, of the Haram, of where the Kaaba is. And just what a moment, you know, just a special moment to be so close. Because obviously the masjid is so big, so, so to be blessed to be able to actually do my prayers right there. And you can also see all the buildings back there. And But you know, subhanAllah, when you're there, you don't see all that. And it's, it's, it's amazing to the, it just talks to the testament of the Kaaba. Like it is what draws your heart and your eyes, like your entire being in. You don't see, so it's very interesting. I'm like, obviously I took this picture, someone took this picture because I'm in it. 
And I didn't, I didn't notice that. I'm telling you, like, you don't notice all of these crazy tall, like, it, buildings that you're staying in, because I was at the Hilton right up the road. So we're obviously utilizing it, but, you know, I think black and white really uh, makes a picture look alive and you could feel like from back in the day. But you really don't notice these buildings or if your heart's in the right place, you know, like it's, it's the distractions, you know, that's what it is really. So all the distractions in your life, you don't have to notice it if, you're, if your heart, if your kubla is in the right direction. Um, so we drink some um, and then this is probably like towards the end. This was just cute because this girl was here and I was missing Radia, mashallah. She had a good time. She was, you know, Subhanallah, I'll mention this is that, you know, um, as much as this trip was so healing for me, you know, Radia was with her, with her aunt and, you know, her grandparents, you know, Steve's parents and her cousins. And, you know, my sister-in-law wrote to me and she said, you know, Radia has been healing for us. And so, Alhamdulillah, this trip all around, obviously they miss Sohib so much, but she brought this joy and, and love into their lives and healing. So all around, there was a lot of that, mashallah. Um, there's pigeons near the courtyard, which was just really kind of, uh, and, and people were selling seeds and so you could give them seeds. And <laughs> <laughs> And then I think, yeah, this, you know, so, and this, again, beauty of elevators. Again, an elevator door. It was just so pretty. <laughs> you just like don't want to get out. And this is in the Hilton. Again, just had to take it because it's just gorgeous. And this is, mashallah, Haji Sham, our teacher, and then um, Ahmed um, or Barak Ablu, as he's known, um, uh, you know, had, was reading the poem to the group that he had um, written. So you can find that online as well. And this is our like, I think this might be like the, the you know, our, 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 our farewell tawaf, um, you know, our last day. And just, you know, like this is the position, you know, and subhanAllah, it was around New Year's, New Year's time. And I was reflecting on it later because, you know, subhanAllah, like again, like, you know, I grew up in the States. I grew up here in Brooklyn, born and raised, you know, and New Year's around this time, just the way that it's done. And, and there's some, you know, obviously importance to how people reflect, but I think we, doing the off during New Year's, like there's nothing better. Like, I think I can't look at New Year's the same way again. Um, there's just, you know, renewal in its, you know, sense of the word. So we'll see how New Year's comes, but it was just, just so pure to be in this space uh, around New Year's time. Alhamdulillah. I made so much dua. I made dua for all of you here. I made dua for so many people in my life who've come and left and, been and otherwise I made dua for people I never made dua for you know people family close to me and so just so many openings uh, with my friend Shiva and Sin alum. you know there's a picture of the permit because it's all about the permit and the smartphone you had to show it at every gate you know as i want to end this um lecture by just going back in time to 2013 and i think this picture for me you know it means more than just even us it means you know that people have come to this space and left this space and left this world you know it is not about this dunya um it is about the akhirah you know people from, you know, Prophet Ibrahim, <laughs> you know, from time from Prophet Adam's time, like people have walked on this earth and left this earth. And I think for me, you know, obviously like it was, what a moment it was, like this was my first Umrah, my first gazing of the Kaaba. This was really special, so I remember it. But um, it's just a reminder for us all about life and death and, you know, what, real, what the reality of our space will be. And I took this picture of Sahib after he'd done his Umrah and, you see, hair is gone. You, know, you can see that it's filled. You know, that's that's what uh, real umrah times are like. Um, Subhanallah. You know, just trying to just read Quran and just stare at the Kaaba. This is our Bezbis together. Um, I remember I mentioned I sat in the courtyard. So that's me in 2013, and that's I had in 2013.
um, such as flashbacks, um, you know, time gone, time gone. Just really cherish every breath that you guys have, like that we all have, you know, just gratefulness for every day. And this is a retractable roof. It's not a great picture because I think you didn't have a great smartphone back then, but it does move and you just literally see the heavens above. This is one of my favorite um, pictures and I'll just end with this since we're back in, you know, this I took in 2013 and it was just a moment of this, you know, pilgrim just sitting there and just gazing at the, at the, at the dome. And, you know, this really, this, this is just a story of love, a journey of love and, you know, I'm just, so blessed to have gone on it and um, may Allah invite you all um, to go and experience um, this space. Um, Alhamdulillah, thank you so much. <laughs>
I think it's just so beautiful that you connected everything to, to love and, you know, that's what it's about. And Arshi and I were talking last night and we were talking about how, you know, it, you, you make the intention, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends you the invitation. Mm -hmm. Without that invitation, it, it's just not going to work out. Like we were recently planning to go on our Umrah trip and we wanted to take our three and a half year old, but children are not allowed. So that plan is, you know, <laughs> so we were just thinking it's just not our time we, we, we haven't received that invitation yet but it, it's just about love and you know just got to pray a little harder and and feel it more strongly anyone who hasn't been <laughs> anything that that moved you or touched you or a, a ooh moment or like oh i want to go there <laughs> wow that's amazing anything, anything touch you of course, again, I think uh, to re we'll get this up and so everyone can go back and sit with it and share it. And I think there are a lot of lot of beautiful things that Arshi shared. I wasn't taking notes, but but she shared a tremendous amount of wisdom and in, in what she and what she was what she was sharing. And I just want to say that the girl with the expired New York uh, license <laughs> yes. was probably an angel. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> She ran fast, that girl. <laughs> you know, it was interesting. I was thinking about um, Mount Arafah. And one of the things I remember, like when I went up there and I, as I was leaving, I thought to myself, I need to find a Mount Arafah when I come back. And I think, you know, to be, I think that's one reminder to just be out in nature, to find that mountain, to find that space where you can feel that connection. Um, and, and, and the seasons shouldn't stop you today quite cold, but the winter shouldn't stop you from being outside and breathing in um, this cold air but, um, and finding that space that will give you that connection. And you can find it again, it's, you can go, you know, look through the distractions and nature is your friends. And so I remember that moment, I was like, let me come in, I need to find that mountain and I'm still searching for it. So. <laughs> get Ashi to write all this down. <laughs> put it in a book. Um, yeah, it was beautiful. Uh, I, I'm, I'm looking. I don't see any questions. Um, from, there's like a chat thing, but... Um, it looks like most were, were, were yeah. in, in kind of in, in praise and appreciation for the beautiful I'm presentation. I'm if Sabrina sees something, she can okay. she can speak to it. But, um, um, I, I'm looking at the time, yeah, and I know, I know that it's week four for our students, yeah. and, uh, no, and they're probably much tapping much. their feet underneath the table because <laughs> they're ready to go study, believe it or not. Yeah, no, they so are actually going to go study. We are so yeah. thankful for those of you, uh, Arshi's uh, friends and loved ones have also joined us in person. And we know many of you all are, 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 are in the virtual world. Again, we thank you so much for you taking um, so much of your time this evening. Uh, we hope that we'll find other opportunities to invite our teacher and our friend, uh, the loved Arshi, back to share with us. Uh, we encourage you to stay uh, in touch uh, um, with us here at the Muslim Life Program, we will we will do the same and encourage you to to be mindful of all the things that we have coming up between now and Ramadan. There's a lot, and then of course Ramadan is is, is fast approaching. Um, we're always thankful for your time. We're grateful for you. We thank Allah. We will praise uh, Allah and 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 ask Allah to to remember Imam Sohaib, uh to to give him. An expansive, expansive existence, and to bring him close to, to you, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. We ask Allah that you keep our dear Arshi close to you, and in your in your forgiveness, in your mercy, and in your compassion. We ask that you do the same for our beautiful idea, that you allow her to continue to grow, surrounded by love, and that she takes that love and gives that love back out to all those that she comes in contact with, that she grows and she flowers and she blooms among us. Mm -hmm. Ya Allah, we ask that you give us just a taste of that space of our beloved, that we're able to experience, to feel proximity to you, and to him, and to each other, to our humanity. We thank Allah for all that you do, us, all that you allow us to do. We ask you, Allah, to continue to forgive us for our errors, those that we make that we're aware of and those that we make that we're unaware of. We ask Allah that you fill our hearts with love, that you guide us, and that you give us light, 
always need to learn. Thank you again for joining us. Thank you. No, thank you. Thank I just want to reiterate about the Muslim Life Program. Join the email list, follow us on social media, um, Instagram and, and Twitter and Facebook, and um, just to stay in touch. And that's, you know, I made dua for people, but I also made dua for organizations. I, I want the Muslim Life Program to thrive. It has a really amazing heart, and Imam Khalil has been doing a fantastic job. So stay connected, stay tuned, and, and, and stay in touch. Sorry, go. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs>